Okay, first of all, are there any questions on vowels and consonants? Anybody have any questions? Remember, you always have your questions ready so we don't have to spend a lot of time shuffling papers. Any questions on vowels and consonants, chapter 3? And for next week, you're going to read chapter, which chapter? 11, right, OK. Any questions? Yeah. I compared the uh, table in 13, page 39 in, about, in, in our textbook, and mm -hmm. then they have it. Yeah, they do have it. Real. Look at column two. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They have yeah, er for that. American and then a uh, for British. So heard in British and heard in American. So they do have it in there. Uh, excuse me. This one? This is the volume no, you're talking about. No, no, sorry, it's this one. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. Uh. Okay. Um, I think it's because that one often gets simplified to all, like for poor in British is poor or poor. But actually, it should be in here, poor. It's not as common now because people simplify it to all. But I think they should put it in here. I don't have an answer for that. They do explain it in the text, though. They do mention in the text when they talk about how poor is pronounced in British English. 42. There we go, yes. So where they're talking about how poor, there we go. It's in the third to the last line of the first paragraph on 42. So British, some British speakers, usually old-fashioned, they do talk about it, so ooh, but they didn't put it in the list. Maybe because he considers it old-fashioned, and most people now say pull instead of pull. It is a bit inconsistent, and you're very sharp for having caught that. That's very good. He should explain that. Yeah? Good. Anything else? Yumi, go ahead. Third paragraph. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it said, um, British speakers have three different vowels in the words Mary, Mary, and Mary. Right. But most uh, Americans do not distinguish all these vowels. Right. But I think the, f uh, the first one is different from the second and the third one. In Taiwan English. Really? Mm -hmm. And in some Americans' English as well. On the East Coast, a lot of people have three vowels there. Like my friend from New York, he has three different vowels. My British friend has three different vowels. I have one vowel, all the same. Mary, Mary, Mary. Mm -hmm. On the East Coast, it will be Mary, and then Mary. And then I don't know exactly how they say Mary, M-A-R-Y. But in British, I know it better. It's Mary, Mary, and Mary. It's three different ones in British. You can do it fine. You'll have no problem with it. Jie Wen is Mary. Mary, that's a, no problem. Kuai Le is Mary. And then M-A-R-Y is Mary. A, A, Mary. Right. I learned that from my teacher. And I listen to people really. And parents is the same vowel. Parents. Parents. I'm not very natural, but that's sort of the vowel. So Mary, Mary, Mary in British. And the East Coast, they also, some people also distinguish three vowels. I don't, though, so it's hard for me. Mary, I, Mary. I, did, I distinguish two vowels. Yeah, in Taiwan English, they teach you marry for a Wen, right? That's more East Coast. And the other are Mary, right? Mm -hmm. I have one more question for uh, page 37, uh, 27, first paragraph, the first line. Um, it says the vowels of Spanish, Hawaiian, and Swahili, but not Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, why, why they don't have Japanese here? How do you say u in Japanese? Mm. It's like udon, 
udon, right? U. So it's not u. Yeah, that's why. The u is weird. In comparison to another language, they don't think it's weird. Okay, does that answer the question? Good. And Yumi, you had something? <coughs> It says in page 20. But it says, make sure you it say is, says. Everyone it says. Says. Said. 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 Now I got it. It says in page 28 that in general American English, there are 14 or 15 different vowels. Right. And I'm wondering why does it note that 14 or 15 instead of a definite figure? And why it remain the variability? Does it keep for certain re rarely occurring vowel? Nope. Everybody, what's the answer to that? You know the answer from last semester. Exactly. Am I one of them? <laughs> Am I one of those people who does not distinguish ah and ah? No, I'm not. But about half the people are in the States. We, we mentioned it quite a few times last semester. Mes, last semester. Mm -hmm. So ah and ah are the same vowel for many Americans. Not for Brits. They distinguish them very clearly. But in American English, they've been coming together for over 100 years now. It's an ongoing process. And it's about half the people now, but it may not ever completely finish. So some people may always distinguish them, and a lot of people won't. Language change is kind of hard to predict. Okay, did that answer the question? Yeah, and another question at the, at the, at the bottom of tw page 27 mm -hmm. that it, say, it says okay. in English speaking words are by dialectical and they speak in one way at home while being able to speak in a formal way when required to do so. Right. And I think this doesn't only occur in English. Maybe many language speakers, they will do like bilateral. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. That's all I can say. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Most of us have different ways. Remember when they, we had that lesson about phonemes and allophones? We have different ways of speaking to everybody. We have one way of speaking with our friends, another way when it's a very formal situation, another way of speaking with our family members, maybe different with our parents and from our siblings. So we all have different styles. So that's quite normal. Code switching. We're always code switching, depending on the situation. Anything else? Sure. Uh, I just found that, well, well, OK. It's in this book, it doesn't, it doesn't mention you as a distinct vowel. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, so what should we uh, realize you as, uh, should we still uh, recognize it as a diphthong, or it's, it has a special status in, among just, the vowels. Excuse me, I would just call it a rising diphthong, that's all. It's a diphthong. Because it's got that very special distribution, and it doesn't work with other combinations. So y and u go together as a unit, definitely a diphthong, in my opinion. And then historically, by spelling, you can see cut cute. A uh, goes to u. That's a whole chunk there. Okay, anything else? Um, about table two, 3.2. Mm -hmm. uh, they add a long symbol. A long? A long symbol for, after, for, for E and R and O. And um, the table. Can I just look at it? They add this after. Uh -huh. RPA vowels. I see. So what? That's because it was probably the year that he made the change in this book as well, when he started writing E with a length mark and then E with no length mark. He did that for one edition. I forget which edition. Maybe two editions ago. He just changed the whole book. Not the whole book. It was inconsistent. He forgot parts. It was, it was really kind of a mess that year, I thought. So we never really changed. But for one year, he decided that after the so-called longer vowels, he would put a length mark. And then he realized it's allophonic, or it's just something that naturally happens. It's part of the, it's part of the vowel, so you don't, need to, you don't need to represent it separately. U has a different quality. It has a different height and a different length. Yeah, so I would just say ignore it. 
That's an older edition. I bet in the new edition they got rid of that. I'm guessing. I haven't seen the new edition. Okay? That's all. Anybody else? Hand in your work. Good. For Monday. Put it in your notes. It's an assignment. It was an assignment before and somebody maybe, some of you maybe missed it. So web page number four under phonetics two. Read it carefully and follow the link. Sometimes you can skip the links, but this time you need the links because we have samples of the sounds that we've been learning in chapter six. Okay? Have questions ready for Monday. Web page four of phonetics two. Follow the links, listen to the sound files, bring your questions to class on Monday, okay? And are there any questions on the latest Shida article on m, n, and ng? Any questions on that? I think that's pretty simple because we went over a lot of the things in the article in class many times. Except somebody used different example words in the table. I don't know why they did that, but anyway. So no questions on the Shida article? Then we've covered all that. In class once, I think I said Nostric. I have seen that name used for it, but it is Nostratic now. This idea that all languages go back to the same original language. I have seen people call it Nostric. I don't remember what I said in class, but I guess Nostratic is now standard. So if I said something else, it's Nostratic. A lot of you put it in your notes. I just wanted to make sure that that was correct and clear. So some people have the idea that all human languages have the same origin. They were originally the same language. That's the Nostratic hypothesis. And that is it, unless anybody has questions. We're going to do our dictation. Everybody get your paper ready, pen, correction tape if you like. Name in the upper right hand corner. We're going to use actual words from a language this time. And the language is Khmer. Khmer is the national language of what country? Khmer. Pick a continent first. Asia. Uh, Asia, good. <laughs> Part of Asia. Well, you're not so far off, actually. Well, no, it's not South Asian. It's Southeast Asian. Southeast Asian. India, Pakistan, that's called South Asia. This is Southeast Asian. It's, it's a place tourists love to go, tourists from Taiwan. Where is that? Cambodia. 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 And their national language is Khmer. It's not a tone language. Um, and today the Zhongdian is on what kind of sound? Implosives. So I'll tell you right away there are no ejectives. I can tell you that. So don't guess ejectives if you hear a weird sound. And just so you line shake ejective. Yeah, there are no ejectives. But the other sounds may appear. Okay, everybody ready? You're probably going to have to watch me and concentrate because these are somewhat unusual sounds. Everybody ready? Ten items again. Number one, pa, pa. I will give you the vowels because I'm not testing you on vowels today. And that will just simplify things. Some other day I'll test you on vowels, not today. So I'll just write it over here. Okay, that should make your job easier because the focus is going to be on the initial consonants, not on the vowels. Those are the vowels that we need. These are real words. I don't have meanings for all of them, but they're all real words. 
<clears throat> and my pronunciation is not perfect, but it's good enough for a dictation like this. So once again, number one, pa, pa. Ready? Number two, ban, ban. Number two again, ban. Number three, ba, ba. Three again, ba. Number four, ready? Okay, ba, ba. Ready? Number four, ba. Number five, dab, 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 dab. Number five again, dab. Number six, dam, dam. You got the vowels up there. Use the vowels on the on the board. Ready? Number six again, dam, dam. Number seven, bu, bu. Seven again, bu. Number eight, tum, tum. Number eight again, tum, tum. Number nine, bat. Bat. Number nine again, bat. Number ten, tuk, tuk. Going to read through all of them again. Everybody ready? One, pa, pa. Two, ban, ban. Three, pa, pa. Four, pa, pa. Five, dab, dab. Six, dam, dam, dam. Seven, bu, bu. Eight. Tum, tum, nine, bat, bat, ten, tuk, tuk. Okay, check over your work. Don't leave any blanks, no blanks. Guessing is always better than nothing. Very quickly, put the answers on the board. Let's start over here this time. And with brackets. First one, correct? Pa, 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 not pa. Pa. Second one, can you say it? Ban, ban. Uh huh. Third? Pa. We've gotten these down now. The and the. And four? Pa. And four? Five. We're missing something here. Final what? 
Dap. Watch my mouth, listen. Dap. Dap. Is there voicing? No. Then why did you say B? Yeah. Male voicing goes to P, yeah. This is not the best pen. Okay. Dap. Dap. Everyone? Dap. Yeah, good. Six. Dam. More ah. Uh, I'm trying to ah. Okay, dam. Mm -hmm. Seven. Fu. Yeah. Eight. Pum. Pum. Mm -hmm. And nine. Something's missing there. I think that some of you assumed that they were only going to be CV, but some had a consonant at the end. What's the last consonant? It's a T. Yeah. But, everyone? But. but. And then 10? Tuk. 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 If there were no K, I would have said tu. Tuk. Tu. Tuk. Tu. Tuk. Tuk. How that you could have put a whole in there, at least, because it's been cut off by something, <coughs> even if you didn't get the K. And it's certainly not a P. We know it's not a P, because you can see a P. Toop, toop, sorry. Toop, toot, toot. That's a T. And toop, sorry? A glottal stop is pretty good. A glottal stop is pretty good. <laughs> it's a K. But a glottal stop is, is pretty good, really. Okay, see if you can hear a difference between the glottal stop and the K. Everyone, here's glottal stop, listen. Do. Do. Just listen, don't copy now, listen. Do. 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 All right, with a, with a K. Do. 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 Can you hear something of a difference? It's difficult. I know it's very difficult. Sometimes I may be I may be a little inconsistent with my vowel. That's true. That's my fault. Do, do. There will be a little difference in the vowel, even if I'm consistent, though, because the final consonant will change the vowel a bit. Okay. Questions? Anything? Do you want to hear the whole thing one more time? Yeah. All right. Pa. Ban. Ta. Pa, da, dam, pu, tum, ba, tuk, tuk. Okay. No more pu gan xin da. Yo, Annie. I thought it just comes a consonant and a vowel. That's right, and that goes to show you never assume anything. That's true of the world in general. People will often actually, 就是这样子很容易受骗。人家会给你带一个 pattern, and then suddenly they break the pattern and you're not expecting it. It's something like bait and switch. 什么挂羊头卖狗肉,常会这样子。Unreleased? Absolutely, yes, yes, they were unreleased. That's good. Unreleased is fine. Anything else? So we have to look at your tongue when you, when you say number two and two, distinguish whether it's a okay K or a P. I think you can do it with your ears. I don't know because we're not so good. I'm the one giving the test. If I were taking the test, I might make the same mistake. I can't tell you. I can record it and then try it on myself. I'm not sure. I think there's a difference in quality. It was difficult. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Shh. Okay. For which one? Ten. Tuk. If it were good, it'd be tung. Tuk. Tung. Tuk. Tung. Yeah. That's one of the things that we're training. 
is paying attention to things like aspiration, voicing, glottal stops, all kinds of things like that. So that wasn't really the zonggen of this test, but all of it is good training. Because next time, needy boy is okay. Anybody else? I was going to ask, uh, in number two, what's the difference of uh, half an N in the final and only a nasal-like vowel? Oh. Well, for one thing, you can probably see it. But let's do an N and then a nasalized vowel. All right. Ban. 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 I'm sorry. Ban. 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 That one's pretty clear. So, ban. 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 Nigga hamishian. That's much more, much easier than K and glottal stop. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. I still don't understand uh, the difference between the first vowel and the fifth vowel. These two? Okay, let's just go over it again. And that's useful. Because you have it in Mandarin, it will be very easy for you. Ah is this one. This is ang zang the ang ang. Um,把那去掉，剩下的就是啊，对不对？丫头的丫那个啊，啊，嗯，All is really helpful this time. Sometimes Mandarin doesn't help us, but this time it really helps. You probably it's probably easier for you than an American, unless they know a southern accent, like I like it. I lock it. Then we can get that vowel from a southern accent. Okay? That helped? Anybody else? And that's also in the Shida article on nasals, the first one. The second one, Hamil, Dun Kashi I'll probably put it up one of these days. So if you have questions about nasals and the vowels, a lot of that's in that in that piece. Anybody else? Hayoma. Okay, hand in your work please. So you probably avoided making some mistakes that you made last time, like the the and the the problem. That's probably solved now mostly. But you probably have some new problems that came up. So every time you have a new problem that comes up, remember, it's a gift. It's not a bad grade. It's a gift. Because unless you have a mistake, you make a mistake, you may never ever find out about it. Just remember that mistakes are gifts, especially when somebody points them out. And. You know, that's it for today, uh, except for the course. The rest of the time we're going to work. No, 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 we're not going home. We're not going home. But I mean, that's it for all the Zati Zabada stuff. The rest is the course. And we, we should be finishing this chapter either today or Monday. So we're going to be moving faster this semester than last semester. Last semester, we really had a slow start. Um, and I remember it's Jerome's term. Turn, not term, goodness. Turn, and we're on page 151. And we have the last two sentences of the third paragraph. Right? Yep. Go ahead, Jerome. To produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart during the whole during the whole of the whole whole oh whole. Yeah. During the whole of the closure period. Closure period. Closure period but close together at the moment of release of the closure. All right, a lot of you are doing that and still haven't fixed it. It's not release, it's release. It's really short because of the S. And for some reason in Taiwan, it gets long. And it's the one long vowel that's not supposed to be long. Usually your vowels are too short, but this one, okay? So release, 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 release. release. Don't make it long, it's E, it's not I, but it has to be short. So, uh, at the moment of the release of the closure. At the moment of the release of the closure, mm -hmm. so that voicing starts as soon as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis. Okay, you put stress on the right words, but you put tonic stress on all the words. And we shouldn't put tonic stress on all the words because it's a whole system. That means Certain words should be stressed. That shows that they are either content words or there's a contrastive relation with another word. So they get normal stress. 
Conic stress gives us a different piece of information. Not only is it a content word, but it's at the end of an utterance, of some kind of utterance. At the end of a phrase or the end of a compound. It's at the end of something. So when we hear a tonic, that means we're getting ready for a continuation rise and something else is going to happen or else it's the end of the sentence. Did everybody follow me? Tonics are really important. They're much higher than the other stresses. So we've got unstressed syllables, stressed syllables, and then tonic stress. Unstressed is deeping down. Stressed is higher pitch, longer, etc. Tonic is much higher. It goes much higher. And if you make all of the stresses into a tonic stress, it sounds like you're really excited and we wonder what is the big deal? That's how it sounds. We have to leave space for the tonic. So if you make all of them high, then your tonic has to go up here and you're a guy. Okay? So let's try this again. Listen carefully. Note the relative pitch of my voice on the ordinary stresses compared to the pitch of my voice on the tonic stresses. Everybody understand what to watch out for? Okay, <clears throat> um, To produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure period, whole of the closure period, but close together, that's xiao tonic, we jiao xiao tonic, at the moment of release of the closure, so that voicing starts as soon as there is sufficient airflow, soon mangalda, voicing So that voicing starts as soon as there is sufficient air. There we go. That one's really high. That's the real tonic there in this phrase. Airflow through the glottis. Airflow is nigga utterance, nigga phrase, the tonic. Because the glottis is a tonic. It has a whole go. So listen to me, read it again, and pay attention to the relative height of the pitches. To produce this stop, this stop Jesus It's the stop in da, right? We skipped that because we did it last time. So in the next waveform da, let's just look at the waveform to remind us what we're looking uh, at. Next page, look at da, it's the second one in Cindy, T A. Okay? That's the one where we have just a tiny, tiny bit of aspiration at the beginning. It's less than 20 milliseconds, so we can what it? We can, do we have to pay attention to it? No, under, tw under 20 milliseconds, we ignore it. So that little bit of aspiration, it's under 20 milliseconds, we ignore it. So we consider this as zero VOT. So again, to produce this stop, you might stop Tigo, to produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart. Xiao tonic. During, during the whole of the closure period, closure is a phrase, the tonic. But close together, tonic. At the moment of release of the closure, or you can say at the moment of release of the closure, look at closure. At the moment of release of the closure, so that voicing starts. As soon as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis. So, you wouldn't weigh meow, but on the other hand, if you know how the system works, it happens naturally or with just a little bit of forethought. Can you try that again? To produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure, closure period, but close together at the moment of release of the closure. Together, home end, it's a. Uh, at the moment. Yeah. You have a little Sotayin, but that's also British, so I, I'm just being picky. At the moment is possible. In British, there tends to be more ats for at. If you listen to Prince Harry, Jilhwindas, and William. William, yeah, listen to Prince William. Um, he has it. Somebody pointed out in a discussion list. Like at, he will say at. Not at really clearly, but at. African. So that can be British. I'll let that by. Um, at the moment of release of the closure. At the moment of release of the closure. Everything else was fine, yeah. So that voicing starts as soon as there is. So that voicing starts as soon as there is. 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 As so
as soon as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis. Beautiful, you got it, that's it. That's the system, that's how it works. So if you get a model and you get the rules, you can do it, you apply it, it's, it sounds great. Um, so the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure period. Remember, approach, hold, release. So during the hold period, and then the voicing can start as soon as you have enough air to produce the vowel. Let's go on. In the middle of the closure, the vocal folds might be... Middle is still too high. You're still making too many tonics. In the middle of the closure... In the middle of the closure, right. the vocal folds might be, might be in a position similar to that shown in the top right photograph. Shown, pause. Shown in the top right fo photograph in figure 6.6. .6. Let's look for 6.6. .6. Okay, it's the one we've looked at so many times. Um, top right photograph, so that's voiceless. This is a voiceless stop. And it's confusing because, like we said before, for native speakers, they would certainly write D if they hear da, da. They would certainly write D because our initial D sound is usually not voiced in English at the beginning of an utterance. Mm. Okay, that's good. Next. The third waveform. The third waveform. The third waveform. Hmm? Oh. Because we repeated waveform. And third, third is in contrast with what? Second. Next. Next. Right. The third waveform. Right. Ta mm -hmm. shows an aspirated stop with a VOT of about 50 milliseconds. In producing this sound, the vocal folds are apart during the stop closure and the glottis is still open at the moment of the release of the stop closure. Okay, your stresses and tonic stresses were beautiful. They were excellent. Um, just two tiny things. Um, we usually say during instead of during. It's during is not wrong, but we usually say during. Everyone, during. during. In American, during. during. And the other thing is you can link more. For example, are apart. Instead of saying are apart, are apart is perfectly correct. There's nothing wrong with it. But native speakers will usually link are apart. Mm -hmm. During. Good. Your, the pitches of your stresses and your tonic stress, they were perfect. They are absolutely perfect. Okay, so we've got ta now, and the VOT is about how long? 50. Don't make sure it doesn't sound like 15. Make it really clear. 50. 50. Yeah. Okay, because I heard 15 when it was supposed to be 50. So, 20 milliseconds, isha, does not matter. But how about 50 milliseconds? You think milliseconds, how many are so much? It's how it's going to be. How many are you going to be? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So if it's about 50 milliseconds, that's enough for aspiration and that makes it a, what kind of stop? An aspirated voiceless stop. And then I said, 对, 有什么了不起? And that reminds me of something I heard on UFO this morning on the, on the radio. I want you to tell me if this is a grammatical sentence in Chinese. Um, 我不可能去会那么多东西. 你会不会,比方说,你会不会学城市啊,你会不会这个,会不会那个? Uh, and then the speaker said, 我不可能去会那么多东西. Is that, is that grammatical? No, but in this case? And he used it humorously. Because they say, for example, they说,网上放个旅旅表传给他那个未来的老板,他不会。然后他也不会什么,他列了一大堆电脑的东西,这些年轻人不会。all right, now does it sound normal? It sounds perfectly fine, a little humorous, right? Pass, he's bending the use of the word hui for a humorous effect. So I wrote it down quickly. There's actually one other thing I heard on the radio. I'd have to check. What was it? There's one other thing. You get a lot of good yu liao from the radio. If you can find a good radio program, 
因为他们两个是口才非常好的。Oh, the other one was. 会不会的会。你有说，嗯，说，我跟我们说，你不要我去，你不可能要我会那么多东西。That's right, but I I wrote down verbatim what he said. He said, 我没有时间去会那么多东西。That's what he said. 好玩。You guys are all hesitating, but if you listen to Tang Xianglong in the morning, 他口才非常非常好。His Chinese is really good. If you want to. Hear a good model of someone who speaks really good, educated Mandarin. Tang Xianglong, Tang Xianglong in the morning, Fadia Dian Tai. So I really like listening to him in the morning. Um, the other one was actually more about morphology, and we know about Gong Ye Hua, right? But he invented a word, a word, Qu Gong Ye Hua, like Qu being that Qu, Qu Gong Ye Hua. So what was what would the English be? Do you think? Deindustrialize. <laughs> Everybody got it right away, but you probably never heard that word before. Qu Gong Yan Hua. Sorry. Ping Guoma. I also I, I've heard a, a similar one from Lai Sisheng once. He said Chu Sen Ling Hua, Chu Diao Deforestation. He said Chu Chu Le Zhe Wai, Chu Qu De Chu, Yeah Chu Sen Ling Hua. I'm just telling you interesting things from the radio. Um, the other one was when we were recording, not when I was listening. But anyway, um, I thought that was interesting. That's why I thought I'd mention it. Um, we're going to uh, just go over this to make sure we understood it. So the third waveform, ta shows an aspirated stop, VOT of about 50 milliseconds. In producing the sound, the vocal folds are apart during the stop closure. 就是 hold 的那个阶段，跟前面那个一样，声带是敞开的，是分开的。And the glottis is still open when you release the stop. So that's the difference between those two stops. For da, when do when when do the vocal folds come together? For da, da, when do the vocal folds come together? They're open for the hold phase. When you're just holding the stop, you've got your tongue tip on your alveolar ridge. My vocal folds are. You have to look at what I'm doing. I'm not making any sound. I'm going to make da, but I'm slowing it down. So now my vocal folds are open or closed? Open. They're open. And then they're open for a tiny bit after the release, that 20 milliseconds. Remember that little bit of noise we have there? But we can count it as zero. So da. When do the vocal folds come together in that case? At about the time of the release. At about the time of the release. But for ta, when I'm making, when I'm in the hold phase of the stop, the vocal folds are open. And now I've released the stop. My vocal folds are still open. And they don't come together until we make the vowel after that period of aspiration. That's all they're saying. I think you know that already, but we want to make it really clear and explicit here. And let's take our break. I just want to ask you a quick question before we continue. You didn't TY Hua, but not totally TY. And that is, a lot of you are getting really, really good. Like, if you listen, Jerome started out being already really good. But when we did a little Wei Tiao, then it was nearly perfect. He got the regular stresses and the tonics and everything perfect. They, there's male jatsu. So you guys are getting a high level of skills, a lot of you. you know, most of you should be able to. How are you going to teach that to other people? That's what I'm wondering, because a lot of you will now have skills that many of your classmates don't, right? And then in the future, some of you are going to be English teachers. So you can teach by example. Just hope that they pick it up. If, they, if you teach them to have good listening skills, they'll listen and they should be able to pick it up. And if they're really paying attention, they'll ask you why you do this or why you do that. But I'm just curious, how will you teach this in the future, assuming you're going to teach it? Anybody have any thoughts on this? Can you write it down as a question? You yourself, how would you teach it? How do you plan to teach it if you're going to be a teacher? And then a third question is, how can we introduce it to the Da Zong of Taiwan? 
Because they really should have this information too, don't you think? Because not having the information holds you back. You're making mistakes that you're totally unaware of. Some of them are not mistakes, they're just sort of shi. they're just refinements. But they're not that difficult because if you are given a good model and you're paying attention, you can reproduce it perfectly. As long as you have a normal brain and normal ears, and all the students we get have normal brains and normal ears. So if you are paying attention, you can do it. But the thing is, people are mostly not paying attention. They're shutting out sound. They're just using It doesn't matter. But if they were taught how to listen, how to imitate, I think just about everybody could reproduce it perfectly. Everybody has the bunning. Everybody has the ability. The thing is that they are not being asked to pay attention and reproduce something carefully. They could if they were trained, but they're not getting the training, most of them. The teachers are not aware of it in most cases, and they're not demanding it of the students. And then a lot of people have the attitude, Tina don't you holla. So my question, number three of these three questions. The first one is how would you teach it? You know, how do you plan to teach it if you're going to be a teacher? And three is, how do we get this information to the Da Zong of Taiwan? Can you think of a way that somehow we can get this information to most people who need it? Like people who teach English in Taiwan mostly don't have this information. The teachers don't have it. And just 一般的学过英文的民众是没有这个资讯. If they had it, 没有什么大不了, it's not that hard once you know it. The only problem is that the information is missing. 它就是没有这个资讯，并不是说因为是它是很难很深奥的东西，它不是， right? Once you hear about it, is it really really complicated or weird? Is it that hard? Wait, ma. Vivian's thinking. That's right. That's the problem. The problem is it's different from what you learn, and we're going against habit. The thing is, it goes back to habit, but is the theory hard to understand? I say it's done like ABC, this is how we do it. Is that difficult? No. The hard part is changing it in your own speech because we're going against habit. So the issue is not that the knowledge itself is difficult or complicated. It is not. It really is not. It just happens to be missing. And then we have a bunch of habits there by default that are very hard to change because all habits are hard to change, practically. Most habits are hard to change. So my question for you is, how do we get this information out to the masses of Taiwan, the people of Taiwan? It's not hard. And it would really improve their quality of English and possibly their quality of life. You know, if you speak better English, you can probably get a better job, actually. That's not an exaggeration. How, in theory, how can we get the information out there? There are all kinds of, you know, like the one that I work for or the other ones. People who want to will listen to them. That gets, reaches a certain group of people, but they often don't really emphasize these things either, right? You just follow along in your magazine, and then you do mostly the same stuff you do at school. So how do we get that information out? That's my question, OK? Put it in your notes for Monday. How about that? I want you to think about it. This is not for me, all right? Not for me. This is for you to think about, and then for, for the people of Taiwan, basically. All right, because you may be able to make a contribution if you come up with something good. Okay, let's continue. And Annie, you had a really short one. Do you want to take a little part of the next paragraph, which is really long? How about if you read up to through the closure, read the first five lines. There is a continuum of possible voice, on, uh, voice onset times. Okay, how do we stress that, everybody? Voice onset times. Listen, voice onset times voice onset times. Remember our rule is if we have a whole bunch of words and they look like they're going to be a compound, first of all we find just two words. Which two words? The two with the closest relationship. And then we apply the rules. Onset is a noun times is a Therefore, we say, and then voice is going to be stressed no matter what. So, we say voice onset times. Onset times, 
And onset gets a tonic stress. That's why it's higher. So voice onset times. Go ahead. Some languages. Mm -hmm. Some very languages. Very good. Such as Cindy have very fully voiced stops. Voiced. With voiced mm -hmm. stops with a large negative VOT. Others, such as English, have little or no voicing during the closure unless the stop un, was unless un, un, mm. unless the stop is preceded, preceded. by preceded right. by a sound in which the vocal folds are already vibrating. Okay, was already 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 good. That's very good. And one other thing I noticed, what was it? Was it which? Shima, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, we fixed that, preceded, in which, no, there was something else. Little, it was little. Little is not wrong, but it sounds a little bit like a child's pronunciation, because we usually use a tap. Everyone, little. No. Uh -huh. Have little or no voicing. Have little or no voicing. Voicing. Yeah, you can make it even shorter. Voicing. Voicing. Just any? Okay, now it's pretty good. You can make it even a tiny bit shorter and then it'll be just right. Um, let's try that, everybody. Have little or no voicing. Have little or no voicing. And remember this phrase, little or no. Just remember it as a chunk, little or no, because we use it a lot. Little or no, we use that a lot. Okay? Mm, so, remember that VOT is a continuum. We can have a very, very long negative VOT. We can have a less long negative VOT. We can have zero. We can have, a t we can have just a tiny bit of aspiration. We can have a lot of aspiration. So like so many things in the world, not just linguistics and phonetics, we have a continuum. It does not necessarily fall in set places on that line, the, the things that we're looking for. OK? So um, in Cindy, it has very fully voiced stops. So instead of saying, for example, boy, like we do in English, if it were Cindy, they wouldn't say boy. They would say boy. boy. Right. It's very fully voiced. Large negative VOT. English has little or no voicing during the closure. So we have boy, little or no. That's zero. Unless it's preceded by a sound, which is voiced, for example, a boy. In that case, we, we do pronounce bo with voicing, a boy. A boy. We're voicing it now. Just boy? No, but a boy, yes. Okay, next. In, in which case the, vib uh, the vibration may continue through the closure? Right, a boy. The vibration went all the way through, didn't stop. Okay, now, next. Similarly, languages vary in the VOT they use for aspirated stops. For aspirated stops. For aspirated right. stops. Right. In the Cindy example, in a third row in figure 6.7, it is only 50 milliseconds. In Navajo, as shown... Navajo. I say Navajo. Na Navajo. I guess Navajo is fine, but I say right. Navajo. In Navajo, uh -huh. as shown in the last row in figure 6.7... Figure? Figure. Uh-huh. Figure 6.7... I hear figure. 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 Uh -huh. Figure 6.7, uh -huh. aspirated stops have a VOT of about 150 milliseconds. All right, compare those two. So in Cindy, they do have aspirated voiceless stops. And how long is the VOT plus in Cindy? Amy just read it, 50 milliseconds. But in Navajo, it's 100. And we don't say and usually, 150, Johala. Nigga, and, chudya. We just don't usually say it. 150, is that a big difference? It's a difference of how much? 300%. Okay. So, yeah, that's a huge difference. And in both of them, we call them unaspirated voiceless stops. They have the same name. So, obviously, when we're transcribing, we have to define what we're doing. We have to say, aspirated stops in this language means a VOT of about 150. We have to say that. Otherwise, we will have no idea um, how to make them correctly. We'll think that it's just like Cindy and it'll be way too short. Okay? When producing a strongly aspirated stop, such as Oh. When producing a strongly aspirated stop such as this, the maximum opening of the vocal folds will be much larger than that shown in the top right photograph in si figure, figure mm -hmm. 6.6. Mm -hmm. 
The maximum opening will occur, occur at about the moment of release of the stop closure. I have the stop closure. And stop closure is okay if you want to emphasize closure. Closure is very important, so they do it on the radio all the time. So, at the release of the stop closure, 特别强调 but according to the rule, it should be stop closure. All right, so that's the rule. Sometimes you hear people breaking the rule; it's to emphasize in most cases. Otherwise, they don't know the rule.、Um, now, why would that be? The maximum opening occurs at the moment about at about the moment of release of the stop closure. Why? So we have ta ta for Cindy, but we have ta for Navajo. When it's so strongly ta. When it's so strongly aspirated, why will the maximum opening occur at about the moment of release? You can figure it out. Okay, you don't have to go through the book. Just imagine it in your head. What's going on in your vocal tract? So, for Cindy, ta, but for Nav Navajo. Ha, ha, and right about the moment that I'm releasing that t, that's when my vocal folds are open the widest. Why would that be? That's right. You're going to push out a lot of air, so it's opening wide, and the air is going to push them even wider. So right about when you're letting it go, that air is going to be pushing it wide open. Let's go on. In general, the degree of aspiration, the amount of lag, the the. the The amount of lag in the voice onset time will depend on the degree of glottal aperture or aperture aperture during the closure. The greater the opening of the vocal folds during a stop, the longer the amount of the the longer the amount of the voice the following aspiration. And that is very clear. So most things you don't have to obey if you understand what's happening. If you've got a lot of air that's going to be blasted out really strongly, of course it's going to be open wider. If you have a very long period of aspiration, you're going to have a lot of air that you're pushing out, and that will push them open wide. Go on.、Uh, different languages、mm? choose first dif word.、Um, different.、Mm -hmm. Different languages. You're still doing it. Different. Anybody? Different. Listen, listen. All right, I'll make a contrast. Different languages. Different stop, languages. Stop. Stop and stop.、Yes. Um, different languages.、That's、better. It makes a huge difference. My ears think yes, friendly. I like that. When different languages, I oh no, it's Taiwan English again. Honestly, that's what's going on in my system one. 那个 reaction 是立即的 So different languages. Oh, 又是那种 sloppy 的 Taiwan English. That's my feeling. But different languages 很舒服 Go ahead. And、um, different languages choose different points. Along the VOT continuum and continuum, in forming oppositions among oppositions, more ah oppositions、mm -hmm. among stop consonants. Stop consonants. Stop, stop consonants. Okay, so these two are the same problem. That ah needs to be shorter. Stop consonants. Right.、Uh, this point is illustrated in Figure six point eight, in which some of the possibilities that occur in different languages in in in. In different languages, to make it clear, in in same problem again. The problem、uh, is that in, in different languages, no, that's right, are shown with shown. shown. Everyone, watch two problems. It's not 不是原存没有那么圆，有一点存化不是那么圆。然后是 o 欧洲的 o shown. shown. Good, not shown. 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 Yeah. Are shown、Good. with reference to a scale going from most aspirated, largest pos、uh, largest positive VOT at the top to at most the, at the top、mm -hmm. to most voiced largest negative to VOT most voiced. to most voiced、mm -hmm. largest v,、uh, negative VOT at the bottom at at the bottom. Right. Then. Navajo,、mm -hmm. the Navajo aspirated stops, shown in the first column. In the first column. In the first column,、right. have a very large VOT that is quite exceptional.、Mm -hmm. Quite. Quite. Yeah, not quite. Quite. Quite.、Mm -hmm. Quite exceptional. Being picky.、Uh, Navajo does not have a bilabial stop. Does not have. Not to be a 重 Not treat it like a a very important 实词 
It looks like a shutsu, but it's very important because it changes the meaning exactly opposite to what it was. Okay? Uh, Navajo does not have a bilabial stop series, but for all the other languages, the but for all the for all the other languages, that's better. the positions shown on the scale correspond to bilab bilabial stops. Bilabial stops. Bilabial stops. It's not a compound. Bil bilabial stops. Mm -hmm. As you can see, also in the first column, mm -hmm. also also good. in the first column. A normal value for the VOT of English stressed initial p would be between 50 and 60 milliseconds. English initial b at the bottom of at the, the at the mm -hmm. bottom of the first column may have a VOT of about 10 milliseconds. 10, 10 right. milliseconds, mm -hmm. but as indicated by the dashed line, it may be less. Dashed line. Dashed line. Mm -hmm. It may be less and even slightly negative. Mm -hmm. Slightly. Slightly. That's good. Slightly negative. After an initial s English p will have a VOT, much like English initial b. And we've had that already. We had it last semester. Your phrasing is excellent. It's really good. Um, what are two things that you can improve? Um, stop and stop. Stop and stops is the big one, and also ah. Ah, make it longer, but your phrasing is very good. <clears throat> so we understood everything here. We're talking now about figure 6.8, where we have a comparison between a number of languages. So here we have minus 100 milliseconds for French B, and Thai B is like French pretty much, B, quite strongly voiced. We could compare B and B. In fact, B is not a very good B. Ba or bread is slightly aspirated, not that much. Ba is xi zao. And then ba is bread. So this one is strongly voiced. This one almost sounds like B in English, but not quite. Ta hai si yo yi dian dian aspiration. So it's not ba with just the B. So ba, ba, yo yi dian dian. Yo yi dian dian the aspiration. But anyway, the B is strongly voiced, as in Thai. Then English P after initial S, like in spy, or an initial B like in boy, boy it's hot today. French P like in ba, ba, has a little more aspiration, I believe, than the English B in boy. And Gaelic, Gaelic, the native language of Ireland, has a B about in the same place as English initial B or French P. And then Thai P has a little bit more what? Say it. Aspiration, a little bit more. So it sounds even less like ba. It's got a little more, a little more aspiration. Then we get to a Navajo G, which we would expect to be voiced. But they use this symbol, even though it's, it's over 40 milliseconds, positive VOT. Uh, and we have something that contrasts it, which has a much longer period of what? A longer, a much longer period of aspiration. So we write G in Navajo, but it already sounds like what in English? K in English. It will sound very much like K in English. And it's just a slightly shorter period of aspiration than we have for P, like in Pi. So they have probably something like Kai, Kai. Kai. Instead of kai, pi in, in English, it would be something like kai. Tiny bit of aspiration. I don't know Navajo, I'm just saying according to this table what we could expect. And then how about the Gaelic and the Thai P's, aspirated P's? Are they more or less aspirated than English? More aspirated. Okay, and then why do you think they'd be more aspirated than English? Especially in the case of Thai. Right, because it's a how many way contrast. A three way contrast in Thai, b and b and p. We've got that three way contrast. So in that case, we usually need more aspiration for more contrast. And in Mandarin, ban and pan, we've got more aspiration as well. You need a good contrast because both are voiceless. 
So you need a good contrast. And finally, Zui Kuazang, the aspiration is in Navajo. So something like ha, 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 probably, has a really long period of aspiration. But anything is possible. This is only a few sample languages. If we looked at a lot of other different languages, we'd probably find all kinds of things in between. Let's continue. Other languages make the contrast between phonemes such as p, t, k, and b, d, k in initial position. In initial? In initial position. Can you link it? In initial? In initial? In initial. In initial. In initial. In initial. In initial. That's it. The other thing is other. Other. Right. That's it. In initial? In initial right. position with very different VOTs. A Navajo contrast. 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 Navajo contrast initial k with a g. That is far from voiced. It has a VOT of over 40 milliseconds. 40. 40. Not 40, 40. 40. It's an E. Remember final Y in spelling in English? It's a Yodian, the E, not the that's a problem with KK. 40, not 40. 40. Mm hmm Yep. As this sound is completely voiceless, it might be better to say that the contrast in Navajo is between k and k, rather than between k and g. However, both ways. However. However. Yeah, watch. Don't say however. 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 Mm hmm However, both ways of transcribing Navajo are perfectly valid. Mm -hmm. Are perfectly valid. Are perfectly valid. That was good. As we saw in chapter two, you can make a broad transcription that shows the phonemic contrast in phonemic. A, phonemic. Right. Not phonemic. It's phonemic. Phonemic mm -hmm. contrast in a language using the simplest possible symbols, or you can make a narrow transcription that shows the phonetic detail. As long as the broad transcription is accompanied by a statement that specify how it should be that what? That how? Hmm? A statement that that spec uh, sp specifies z uh -huh. specifies uh -huh. how it should be interpreted. It, stop it stops. How it uh -huh. should be interpreted, it is equally accurate. 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 Why is it it? Adjective, noun, 讲过多少遍, 好多遍, right? That's, that's the way it is with habit. So, 形容词, 名词, A-T-E, it, 动词, eight, remember that. And also, can you try to link a bit more? Um, it is equally accurate. It is, it is. 前一行, 第二, 倒数第二行. It is equally, it is equally 两个联音. Uh. It is equally. Mm -hmm. It is equally. It is equally. It is equally. It is equally. Uh -huh. It is equally. It is equally. It sounds weird when you say it that way, but in context, it sounds really normal. It is equally. It is equally. It is equally. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, the okay. choice of symbol depends in the part of on the reason for making the transcription. Right. In broad transcriptions of English, it is sufficient just to use b, b. But if one wants to show more phonetic... But if one wants to... But if one wants to... One be on the jump. But if one wants to... But if one... If... if but if... But if, uh -huh. but if one wants there to... There we go. But if one wants to show more phonetic detail, one can specify that the phonemes b is a completely voiceless. B. Voiceless. Voiceless. Right. Good. B. B. Uh -huh. In, for instance, that for boy. For instance. For instance, right. that boy. Uh -huh. Similarly, one might want to show phonetic might detail. Might want to. Might. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody, pay attention because just about. I wouldn't say everybody, but lots of people have stop at stops problems. So if other people are being corrected, use that to sort of help you work on your habit, you know, changing it. If, uh, let's see, what was it? M one might want to. One might want to. That's good practice. One might want to. One might want to. And watch the N and one. Don't say one, right. 
One might want to. One might want to. And don't make might too long. It's might, might, because it's voiceless at the end. One might want to. One might want to. Good. And don't say want either. Want, on, on, on. I'm trying to on. Once more, one might want to. One might want to. Good, yeah. Similarly, one might want to okay. show phonetic details such as the aspirate p, the aspirate p uh, that occurs in pi. That, that occurs. That occurs. Right. That occurs in pi, or the uh, word, or the unaspirated mm -hmm. p. Unaspirated for contrast. Okay. Unaspirated. Or the unaspirated mm -hmm. p. Not un. You're doing that's a Chinese lian the fang shi. For example, how do you say good evening in Chinese? Good night or good evening? Wan an. A lot of people say wan an. Wan an. You got ngh. Wan an. Anyway, ah the guan xi. Um, but in English, you have to watch that. It has to stay un. It has to stay alveolar. So um, similar to what what started that. Try it again. Uh, or the unaspirated. Un. That was the, that was the problem. Unaspirated, not un. Mm. You're saying un. Was it so ho so so jie? Unaspirated. Unaspirated. Okay, Lenin. Unaspirated. Unaspirated. Now you got it. Yep. Or the unaspirated mm -hmm. p in spy. Yeah, that's all. Okay, that's it. Everybody understands. The point is that we make choices in both orthography when we're designing a spelling system for a language that didn't have writing before, and also for IPA symbols when we're transcribing an IPA. You make choices, and maybe this symbol represents something in one language and something quite different in another, so you just have to define it clearly. You have a little shuomi at the beginning of your transcription, and this is my usual example. How do we pronounce this? This is the symbol in American? Cup, not cup, cup. Right, but in British it's cop. It's almost a. Ah. It's close to a. Ah. We use the same symbol. It's the same phoneme. It's a regional difference. But why do we use the same symbol? It's quite a different sound. Because it's systematic. So we use the same symbol, but it represents different things in British than it does in American. And they're saying that you can use symbols that we're used to using with new values, but what do you have to do? You can use, for example, G for Navajo when there's no voicing at all. In fact, there's aspiration. You can use it if you what? If you what? Hear me? Yeah, just put it in your description. Just put it in a little explanation before you start. Say that good Navajo is actually slightly aspirated, not voiced at all. You can do that because it's convenient. G and K is a convenient but it means something totally different from English G and K. You just have to make a note of it. Let's go on. Questions? Yes. Yeah. Does it mean that IPA can't really describe every voice, so we still need description for it? It means that in IPA we always have choices, and every symbol in every language will be slightly different. We have this idea that we've learned the symbols and that E is always E, but in some languages E is a little more I. And some of it, it in some languages it might be E. Some it's E, some it's I. But then we have something even lower, I. So we need the yo gang gang the I for a different symbol. Gang ha yo bi. So there's always a continuum. And wherever this language happens to put its sounds, you can choose a symbol that's closest to it. But it's going to be different from, say, English, or different from Mandarin, or different from Southern Mean. So that's one thing you have to know about the IPA. We have symbols that are good sort of landmarks. Okay? Right, good. And we have it just like I said, in such common varieties, language varieties as British and American. Cup, cup. But it's okay as long as we've made it clear ahead of time. Okay, so don't be surprised. Like this, this G in Navajo, I think, 真的是有点夸张.
but it's, it's really a convenience. You can do it as long as you define it. Okay. The second column in figure 6.8 shows how the sounds of French line up with those of English and Navajo. The voice, uh, the voice stops in French and Spanish, Italian, and many other languages are nearly always fully voiced. The length of the voicing varies depending varies. on varies mm -hmm. depending on the length of the closure, which is why we added an arrow alongside French but voiceless stops in these languages are unaspirated. Try it again. Unas unaspirated. You did it. You did it. Mm, making French p similar to say English initial book. Okay, go to the preceding page and look at the French B and we see arrows by both French and Thai, which means they can be more or less voiced depending on what does it say? Depending on the length of the closure. Can ta chang du di bi he de na ge shi jian ni hou de na ge shi jian you duo chang. It will vary. It's not it's not absolute. Okay, let's go on. French but is even more like Gaelic but, which is virtually never voiced, even between vowels. The Gaelic opposition between but and put is 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 in the narrow in, in the in the. All right, a lot of you are doing the same thing. It's brought over from Mandarin. Mandarin. I N J E. It's in one of the Shida articles, I think on nasals. I, excuse me, in. A. Don't say in a uh, because then you'll often say inga. So say i, just a vowel, and then nina the na, in. A. And then it's perfect. You bu hui pa dao na ge shi gen qi le. So in. A, in. A. in a, right. In the narrow phonetic, phonetic transcription. I say narrow. Narrow is East Coast. Narrow. Narrow, mm -hmm. phonet phonetic transcription, b um, versus versus p mm -hmm. in the Gaelic spoken in the outer high Hebrides 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 of Scotland Scotland Scotland. Good. The VOT of p is around sixty five milliseconds, not nearly as long as that in Navajo. Mm -hmm. Not nearly as long. Not, 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 it's not. Not. Okay, that was the same thing as ah, Bella. Okay, so ah, not, not nearly. So don't say nut, it sounds like jian guo. Not nearly as long, long, not nearly as long. Not near, nearly as long mm -hmm. as, as that in Navajo, but longer. But longer stop, it stops. But longer than Long, longer, longer, right? Longer than that in in English. You did it. Good. Very good. Excellent. So we have a pretty long VOT, positive VOT for Gaelic, because we need to contrast it with a voiceless but. Some languages contrast three different vowels, uh, voice onset times. Thai has voiced. Voiceless, unaspirated. Do it again. Voiceless. Voiceless, unaspirated. Same thing again. Sylvie, can you help her? Voiceless, what? Unaspirated. So, Jian Yin, don't say ung. A lot of you are just zidong de, but I found out ung chu. It's because of Chinese. Okay? Unaspirated. Unaspirated. Un. Un. Unaspirated. Let me see. I want to see it as well as hear it. Un, unaspirated. Unaspirated. You got the right place now. Can you make it smooth? Unaspirated. Unaspirated. You still need to know when you're not unchula. Unaspirated. Unaspirated. It's good, but can you link it? Unas, nas. Unaspirated. Now you got it. All right, everybody. Unaspirated. Unaspirated. It's not very natural, but it will help you learn it correctly. A. Uh, Naspirated. Nasper is easy to say. You need the initial N, male winty. Everybody, Nasper. Nasper. Sounds like Casper the friendly ghost. Nasper is his brother, I don't know. Um, Nasper. Nasper. A Nasper. A Nasper. Good. 
But when you make it smooth, it will sound more natural. If I say uh, unaspirated, it's not natural. But that shows you how to do it. So, unaspirated. Unaspirated. That's it. My ears didn't tell me. Oops, not again. Okay, go ahead. Kai has voiced voiceless unaspirated and aspirated stops, as shown in the final column in Figure 6.8. Point eight. Everybody watch that. Six point. Stop it stops with an N in front of it. Six point eight. Six point eight. Good. Figure six, six point eight. Mm -hmm. Words illustrating these contrasts in Thai are given in table, table 6.6. As the case in French. As in? As, as in the case. Not as le. in the. Mm, okay. As in the case of French, 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 mm -hmm. the voice stops are fully voiced with the duration of the voicing, depending on the length of the stop closure. Very good, excellent, and everybody understood that. I'm guessing, right? I didn't interrupt a lot, just a little bit, and we've already covered it when I was showing you this figure. We already covered this material, so this should just be a review. Let's go on. Do you have any questions? Is there anything you need explained again? Let's go on. Many languages spoken in India. In India, same thing in again. In India. Yeah. Such as Hindi and Sindhi. 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 Good. Have not only the three possibilities that occurs in Thai. Thai. But Thai. Mm -hmm. But murmurs stop. stop. It stops. But murmur mm -hmm. stop. But murmur, but murmur stop as well. Good. After the re release of the re clip. Release. Release. Re I say re. You can say release. Release. Re re release. I like that better. Yeah. After the release of the closure, mm -hmm. there is a period of breathy voice or murmur before the regular voicing starts. Some illustrative Hindi words are given in Table 6.7. I think a lot of native speakers would probably say illustrative, but it's illustrative. Actually, illustrative sounds fine to me. That's, that's my, my zhijie, because it illustrates. But illustrative sounds to me like illustrious, dada. Some illustrative, I think it should still be illustrative, though. Okay? The breathy voice the brassy voice release mm. of this stop of these stops of these stops yeah. is indicated by keep reading a, a raised hooky later a raised raised what hook hooked right. later at h, h. Mm -hmm. the the Cindy words in the last row of table six point two also illustrate. Breathy voice stops. Mm -hmm. As shown, as shown, as shown in the tables, in addition to the breathy voice stops, stops, stops. Mm -hmm. Both Cindy and Hindi also contrast stops with three different different voice onset time. Excellent. That was really good. You've improved a lot. Can you feel it? Can you feel it yourself? You sounded great. Let's keep going. I think we can, um, we all understand this one okay? Remember in Hindi we have voiced breathy stops as well as voice stops. Besides ba, we have ba, ba. We have voiced breathy stops in Hindi and Sindhi. Let's keep going. Figure 6.9 figure? Figure yep. six shows, six mm -hmm. shows the wave waveforms of the Hindi dental stops in the second row of table 6.7. There is voicing du during the stop closure of the in the top line, but not during but not, but not during the stops in the second stops. in the stops. Okay, that's a lot of you have this problem with the English A ah or the American A ah, because it's written with O oh, and I think in school many of you learn O. Oh. But it's ah in American stops. Mm -hmm. But not during the stops in the second and third lines. Mm -hmm. The second line has a voiceless, an, an aspirated 
with a VOT of about 20 milliseconds. All right, and that little symbol means it is dental, yeah. The third line has an aspirated t with a VOT of about 100 milliseconds. In the fourth line, the D the, 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 mm -hmm. has voicing during, during the closure followed by a waveform. Closure, pause. Closure followed by a waveform that has some of the appearance of voicing. A wavy line. A wavy line. A wavy line. Mm -hmm. But also has noise. All, also. All, also. 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 All, ooh, 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 all. Also. Also, also has noise sup superimposed on it. Superimposed on it. Superimposed on it. Good. This is breathy voicing. Breathy. Breathy voicing. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to say how long to say, pause. to say how long this breathy voice breathy, breathy voice aspiration lasts as it sh shades Good. into the regular voicing for the vowel. Mm -hmm. During this breathy voicing, the vocal folds are drawn into loose vibrations and do not come fully together. Very nice. Good. So look at the next page. Look at the bottom stop. The waveform at the bottom of the figure in 6.9, we've got da, da, and it's, remember it's dental, so da, da, da. We've got voicing and we've got a lot of air coming out at the same time, that's a breathy stop. Da, da, okay? Let's keep going. The difference between voices and anaspirated, aspirated, and murmured stops, the last three rows in figure 6.9 is largely a matter of the size and timing of the opening of the vocal folds. In voices and aspirated stops, the maximum opening of the Say glottis... Again, the next, the what? Uh, Say it again. The, the maximum. Mm -hmm. I heard, I wasn't sure if there was an M, but there is. Yeah. Opening of the glottis which is not very great, mm -hmm. occurs during the stop closure. And that's repeating what we've already heard before. In voices aspirated stops, the glottal opening is larger and opening a, again. Opening mm -hmm. is larger and occurs later, near the moment of release of the stop closure. Good. In murmured stops, the glottal opening is similar in size to that in voices and aspirated stops. Mm -hmm. Stops. But stops, mm -hmm. but it occurs later during the release of the closure. Release. Release. Don't make it too long. Release. Release. I don't know why it's those words like <laughs> increase, decrease, release. 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 Just make it really short. Release. Release. That's good. Uh, because there is a rapid flow of air through the vocal folds at this time, the vocal folds vi vibrate while remaining slightly apart, thus producing breathy voice. Breathy voice, okay. Mm, the glottal stop opening, the glottal opening is similar in size to what? When we're producing voiced breathy stops, what is the state of the glottis or the vocal folds? It's similar to what? When we're making those ba, da kinds of breathy voice stops, what is the state of the vocal folds? It's similar to what? Last few lines of this paragraph, middle of 155. Murmured and breathy is the same, remember. It's just another word for the same thing. So the, the size of the glottis when we're making these ba, da, ga kinds of stops. It's similar in size to what? When we're making voiceless stops, okay. Um, and that's, I think, all pretty clear. Let's keep going. Learn to produce a series of sounds with different voice, uh, with different voice onset times. Good. Starts, starts by producing fully voiced stops. Fully voiced stops. Fully voiced stops, but the g. See how long you can make the voicing continue during each of these sounds. Okay, you're doing this again. You're putting a lot of falling tone tonics on there. 
Listen to how I do it, because when you imitate, you do it perfectly. See how long you can make the voicing continue. See how long you can make the voicing continue. Perfect. Continue. Continue. Right. So I think one thing you're doing, in addition to being a little too high, is you're falling. You've got these falling pitches. So you'll say like, see how long you can make the voicing continue. And it should be, see how long, continuation rise, you can make the voicing continue during each of these sounds. And try that once more. See how long you can make the voicing continue. Voicing. You can make, you can make the voicing continue during each mm -mm. during uh, during each of these sounds. Each of these sounds. During each of these sounds. There you go. Stop there. A lot of people have to run. There's a lecture at the Jiu Tu the Nega Hui Shi. It's going to be about Hideo Levi, and he's a former classmate of mine at Princeton, and he's a white American, but he writes Tang Xiao Xiao Shuo in Japanese. They call him Hideo Levi, or Levi, yeah, it's Ian, Ian Levi, yeah. And his English name, I believe, is Ian. And I knew him at Princeton, so I want to go hear this lecture. I want to hear about his books. Um, that's it for Monday. What do you have to do? No, it's actually, I'm going to give you another thing, because we're just about done with the chapter. Exercises for Monday. Exercises for Monday. Written exercises, we'll go through the oral ones as well. They're not long, no big deal. Okay, we're going to finish the chapter on Monday. And then do the other things we mentioned. I'm not going to review them because we have to run. That's it for today. See you Monday. <laughs>